in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Father, we thank you. As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. As we worship you, let all this joy that fills our hearts bring a hunger and a hope to those who strain so far very powerful song as we bow in adoration strings please and stand in reverent awe show your majesty and glow let your anointing fall as we declare your name Lord Jesus as the only name who saves let the power of your salvation fill each heart we pray. As we worship you. Lord, as we worship you tonight, let your presence come mighty in our midst. As we worship you, yeah. as we worship you, as we worship you, Shabakata la Bambriya Silavana la Lama. Hallelujah. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. And you are mighty in this place. Faithful God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Sing, you are mighty. Worship him from the depths of your heart. You are mighty in this place. Faithful God. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are awesome in this place. 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 Faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship the God of wonders. You do wonders. Shabbat the Lord.
He's the faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, very simple chant. Yeah, 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 part of the service. Worthy, 
worthy of my praise King of kings Lord of lords let your kingdom reign in my heart Adonai 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 He's the Lamb of God. He's worthy of our praise. You are worthy, worthy of our praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign. One more time. Adonai. Adonai. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. My love, my life, it all. It belongs to you. Listen, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever.
from generation to generation you are God and we bless you we bless you we bless you we bless you in the name of Jesus we praise you this will be our song through the ages we bless you hallelujah hallelujah tonight you will be blessed we're rounding up the series on financial dominion something will come upon you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah while I slept this morning there are few times I have very prophetic encounters hallelujah and while I slept in a dream I was in a place and it was just half maybe half of this place and I was ministering please don't stop playing don't stop playing the Bible says I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp we're not just playing strings you should know these instrumentalists can you increase the volume There's the power of God in this room. Just this room. There is a strong anointing presence of angels. Angelic presence. Mighty angelic presence. Just across. Hallelujah. Listen to my story. And while I began to minister, hallelujah, when I finished ministering, Bishop Oyedeko walked in. And when he walked in, he was about to lay hands on me. And in the dream, Shadrach, just standing where he's standing right now, he came just like some of you who watched the impartation that he did to Dr. Paul and Enche. So when he held the jar with the anointing oil, he fell off. Shadrach fell off. So I ran and I grabbed it and I was praying and telling the congregation passionately prepare yourself something is about to come upon you and so I got down on my knees and he was you know how he shouts like releasing everything from the depths of his heart and while that was happening I was down on my knees and while I was down on my knees he poured the oil when he poured the oil on me he shouted this was a prophetic shout he said be blessed i take you to a new dimension of wealth be blessed be blessed that was a prophetic pronunciation be blessed he kept prophesying it be blessed it was a dangerous encounter be blessed he said you have been faithful with little be blessed he said i bless you and while he spoke, there was such impartation from my head to my toe. My head, it was, it was such an effulgence of power. I knew that I made contact with something in the realm of the spirit. It was such an impartation of power. And I also know that it was an anointing for enlargement. It was an anointing for expansion, a mysterious dimension of increase and expansion until this evening i had not recovered from that encounter i woke up under a dense cloud of god's power god's glory my life is full of encounters this is what the apostolic ministry is about that you open up doors you open up gates and i'm about to prophesy before i start teaching would you open up the gates Gates. Open up the doors. Mm -hmm. Open up the gates. Open up the doors. Yeah, 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 nah, 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 nah. Open up the gates. Open up the doors. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Shira na 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 Musa Kala na 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 Open up the gates Open up the gates Father over your people Open up the gates Mala na na Musa Shena mana mash Makaba la taba it's a season of light and dominion. Lift your hands as I release something upon your life before I begin to teach. Listen, I want you to believe me. We are not just talking stories. Please, I need somebody on the bass guitar. Lift your hands. You will take something this night. You will take an anointing this night. You will take it everywhere. I see the angels of the Lord. At the count of three, I will release it standing in this apostolic office. My God and my King, whatever it is that you deposited tonight, at the count of three, I command the angels that work with my anointing, I compel an impartation. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it outside, take it, take it outside, take it. Angels of fire, take it. Impartations of power, light. I open your understanding. Shake it, take it, baba, baba, baba. Shake it, bara, baba. Shake it, ya, da, 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 da. Shake it, ya, da, da, da. Shake it, ya, Shake it, ya, da, da, da. Light. Let there be light. Light upon your spirit, man. Light, fire upon your candle, fire upon your candle, light. I open your eyes in the spirit to understand that which the spirit will be communicating tonight. Something must happen to your life tonight. Something must happen to your destiny. This is Bethel, the place of bread. This is Bethel, the place of power. This is Bethel, the place of dominion. And God appeared to them in Shiloh. I'm a 
to see where you stand all the time because if you can recognize you will know that his presence is here Nicodemus said we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him no man is able to do this this is not Joshua Selman I have no business with what is happening Hallelujah. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, bless us. Open our eyes to see something powerful. And I pray that this will not just be hostile activities but that something will enter our hearts that will last us a lifetime in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down if you can those who cannot sit down just let them let's let's get into the word at this point you can sit anywhere on the ground anywhere just find somewhere and sit down please There will be mighty impartations tonight as I teach. Although I'm teaching on finances, it is because of the character of what the Spirit of God will be doing tonight. We're rounding up the series on financial dominion and it's going to be an amazing explosion of the Spirit in this place tonight. So everyone, while you're sitting down, please be your brother's keeper. for the sake of those who came outside of this city you see when people see things like this they get very touched some get very shocked and this is the kind of thing 
most people want to see in their ministries and most people believe pastor can you imagine that? most people believe that the way to get it is by just sitting to covet an anointing really let me tell you the truth there are certain things that you will enter that realm you will not even know you have entered the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of any man what god has prepared not for prayer warriors not for them who are fasting them that love him there's something about the love of god when you love god beyond power beyond ministry beyond rema beyond revelation whatever it is nothing can replace your love for god not fasting not prayer i don't care if you pray for 100 days and fast for one year there are many prayer warriors who are far from the presence of God because they are only praying as a way because they have linked the anointing to prayer. So many people pray as a way of priming the spirit. The spirit is a personality. He's not a robot. He has emotions. He can feel the heartbeat of a lover. We love you forever. We love you forever. We love you forever beyond anointing beyond prosperity forever we love you forever we love you forever beyond our successes and our failures altogether we love you yes we love you we love you forever we love you forever whether you bless us or not it doesn't make any difference as far as our love for you is concerned when a man is getting married to a woman they tell them in sickness and in health for better for worse my point is not whether you believe that thing but you must get to that point where your fraternity with the spirit cannot be compromised by anything in time take every other thing from me and leave the love of Jesus and I have enough and I mean it from the depths of my heart See, this is the secret of the presence of God. The Bible says in John 14, 21, it says, He that keepeth my commands is he that loves me. And when he loves me, my Father will love him and we will come to him and manifest ourselves to him. Hallelujah. I was looking for a particular message. I had searched for it online again and again and again i couldn't find it and then i went to sleep and in the dream the spirit of god took me to my laptop and i found the message and he played it for me in a dream completely i didn't find the message in the physical but in the dream i had the message that's the greatest key i know the love of god I don't just mean the lust you have for what he gives uncompromising passion if you never bless me in this life i won't say i won't be angry but leaving you is not an option my bond with god is greater than a salt covenant it's greater than the covenant between a mother and her child i love him forever i love him forever i love him forever you know why the spirit of god is moving us towards this direction of the love for god because we are talking about one of the greatest things that can keep the love of god out of our lives Mama. the only thing that god that is compared with god he says you cannot serve god that spirit 
that has caused men to go to hell that spirit thank you Jesus financial dominion part 4 we are rounding up tonight blessed be the name of the Lord we have come to the end of ourselves take over Jehovah we have touched the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah we have touched the end of ourselves so take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah This is the kind of experience with the spirit that makes you very powerful in the earth realm it is these kinds of people that the bible speaks about that he reproved kings for their sake he suffered no man to do them wrong yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed nor do my prophets it's not just one who is called into prophetic ministry no there is a level of intimacy where you truly become the bride of Christ and it becomes his responsibility as a husband. Hallelujah. Financial dominion part three. Help us Holy Spirit. When we began this series in part one, I'll do a quick revision of part one, two, three for those who are just coming. By the way, please help me celebrate my friend and his lovely wife, Pastor Pete Rock. The senior pastor of House on the Rock, Mina. Hallelujah. Thank God. And we want to celebrate Prof too. He's been away for a while. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Pastor Williams has been missing in action. <laughs> it's good to have you. And Mr. Ojele, thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I said it is very wasteful and even disastrous to give people information they are not prepared to receive hallelujah remember when we started this series we didn't even talk about finances at all i said to us that it is wasteful please and please i encourage everyone if you were not here part one two and three you need it is a very comprehensive series and it's already blessing a lot of people and please try to get it it's free there is no reason why you shouldn't get it hallelujah and i told you that the secret to receiving anything in life is number one you must recognize the need for it god is not committed to giving you anything you have not expressed need for he met blind Bartimaeus and said what do you want me to do what else does a blind man want he can want money hallelujah and then number two you go for knowledge number three you take action then we spoke about the concept of wealth and prosperity remember that was part one and I said the word prosperity comes from the word prosper and it means to do well hallelujah prosperity means to possess a means an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind regardless of what those needs are and I told us that in the kingdom please listen when we talk about prosperity there's the general sense of prosperity that we address in the business world and there is kingdom prosperity our focus in this teaching and always is kingdom prosperity i told us that according to the word of god there are five areas you must do well in to be called prosperous remember what's number one come on now help me number one spiritual prosperity number two mental prosperity number three bodily prosperity the prosperity of your health number four 
financial prosperity number five relational prosperity if you fail in any of this area you are not prosperous according to kingdom standards so you see that financial prosperity is just an aspect hallelujah of kingdom prosperity and i i did talk a bit on them i told you spiritual prosperity means to be born again filled with the holy spirit and then to understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom and also to conform to the image and the character of christ mental prosperity means that your mind consisting of your will emotions and intellect are well developed and deployed to improve the quality of your life hallelujah spirituality does not negate the use of our minds hallelujah and then bodily prosperity means to be free from sickness to be free from diseases to be free from infirmity alongside yokes and all oppressions of darkness and then we define financial prosperity as freedom from poverty please listen lack and the effects that come with them you must add this if poverty did not create any effect we will not concentrate on it our major focus the reason why we are waging war on poverty is because of the effect hallelujah it means having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it that's financial prosperity it's not having financial abundance anybody can dash you money but a supernatural ability that can replenish it and can sustain it that's financial prosperity and then relational prosperity having quality relationships that give you opportunity to express love and care to improve yourself to learn to share to affect and if and impact lives hallelujah we define financial dominion and you'll find that even relevant today we've defined it in every um, of the parts financial dominion is the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring this is what we define as financial dominion financial dominion is not having money financial dominion is the ability to conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring and we listed some effects that come fear insecurity greed self-centeredness unrighteousness i'm just trying to recap very quickly hallelujah and then part two we talked about the anatomy of god's economic system remember the internal workings we examined how the kingdom works and the first part was the role of wealth and prosperity in the kingdom can you remember why god blesses us what's the reason reason number one to live a comfortable life number two to finance the cause of christ on earth so winning the building of god's kingdom kingdom financing and i did say that it is god's plan for every believer to be a part of providing financial supplies for kingdom activities what that means is that there are kingdom financiers, those called specifically into this apostolic ministry of being distribution channels for the kingdom. But everyone is supposed to be part of providing financial supplies for the building of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And then number three, to reveal the love of God. This is why God blesses us. So you must understand why believers are blessed in the kingdom. If you do not understand, you are not entitled to the blessings of heaven to reveal the love of god to a dying world in a practical and a definite way this is where we talk about helping the poor the hungry charity community projects nation building acts of love and kindness that defy religion gender race and social status hallelujah i mentioned something very important that wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's not an accomplishment it's a trust hallelujah then we spoke about the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance remember very very important the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance this was still in part two 
we spoke about the law of tithing and that's the law of open heavens we spoke about the law of seed time and harvest then we spoke about different um, givings in the kingdom offerings in the house of God kingdom investments we examined the concept of first fruit prophet offering vows and sacrifices and then we taught on the principle of seed faith remember the principle of seed faith um, then the week before miracle service that's part three we went to the natural laws of wealth and prosperity and I told you that the problem with the body of Christ is most times we stop at the spiritual laws we just teach people how to give how to tithe how to sow and so on and so forth and then they don't know what to do hallelujah they do not have that wisdom that understanding that ability to make to manage and to multiply their financial resources hallelujah so favor brings finances and lack of wisdom takes it out of believers so we must examine the natural law and there was one scripture proverbs 18 verse 16 that was the core scripture the gift of a man makes room for him remember that and brings him before great people we spoke about the concept of money we spoke about the concept of value and i told you to replace that word gift with the word value a man's value will make room for him and bring him before great men i told us that there are three things we need to experience financial dominion number one financial intelligence number two financial planning number three financial discipline financial intelligence means the understanding of the structure and the workings of money how does it work and then financial planning the distribution of your wealth remember our 30 70 principle remember God savings investment and then our expenditures then we spoke about discipline it takes discipline to stay through and follow through everything and today I'm going to be teaching something very very powerful hallelujah I'm teaching tonight on how to become wealthy that's the last part how to become wealthy well what you want to call wealth creation I actually wrote in bracket here becoming a money magnet there are some things we cannot talk about here this is not a business class investment mentality financial vehicles multiple streams of income debt free living three to five year plan for wealth we may not have all the time but I'll be talking about how to create wealth and you will be so blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ amen first Samuel 17 please first Samuel 17 from verse 22 to 27 blessed be the name of the Lord we have to rush first Samuel 17 verse 22 to 27 hallelujah is projected so let's just save time and David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper can we have King James let's take away the new King James or amplified thank you and David left his carriage in the hands of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren 23 and as he talked with them listen behold there came up the champion everybody say the champion The Philistine of God, Goliath by name. So that was a champion. Out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, who was the man? The champion. So he was not just an ordinary man. The Bible called him the champion. Are you getting my point? Please listen. I want to share with you a very powerful principle. They fled from him and they were so afraid. Verse 25. And the men of Israel said, they were talking to David now, the small boy. Are you getting my point? He was a teenager. Have you seen this man that is come up? He said, surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed that champion. Is, it, is, is that in your Bible? The man who killed the champion. The king. 
whoever that king is so this award was going to be given by the king i told you wealth in the kingdom are you are you understand what i'm saying wealth in the kingdom is not just an achievement it's a trust the king that means the king is sitting on his throne waiting for something are you getting my point the king has wealth the king has all kinds of blessings he said but the king is waiting please get this revelation that the man who killed him the king will what and rich with what kind of riches great riches and will give him his daughter goodness and make his father's house free in israel all of these blessings for whoever has the gods to confront a beast called goliath you will be blessed tonight i'm about to blow your mind with something god shared with me goodness look at see look at this a ten-footed beast is just roaring and threatening these people and the bible did not lie you know i like the bible because it's fair to all men it called goliath a champion bible called goliath a champion meaning he was a man who was killed he was a man who had mastered the art of war and when the nation of israel saw him together with their warriors the bible says they were afraid and then the nation of israel said i mean they, they spoke to david david just had and that whoever notice they did not put gender they didn't put age is somebody learning something no gender no age he didn't even say if the person is a is an israelite or an ishmaelite he said whoever can kill goliath the king has vowed that he will give him great riches one give him his daughter access connection uh, just follow me it's not just about a woman are you getting my point he will give him wealth he will give him his daughter and go to his family and make them free and david spake to the men that stood by him saying because he didn't hear well he said eh, what did you say again let me hear they said what shall be done to the man that killed this philistine notice david did not call him a champion he said what shall be done to this philistine and take it away the reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should defy the armies of god 27 and the people answered him after this man are saying so shall it be done to the man that killed him help us tonight open our eyes oh god and let us see what will get us out of certain realms into new ones forever in the name of jesus christ hallelujah genesis 41 please we choose your way we choose the way of wisdom genesis 41 from verse 33 it will be a very fast reading i just want to build on this and then i'll talk genesis 41 are you there now therefore this was joseph speaking look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of pharaoh and let them keep the food in cities 36 and let the and that the food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of egypt and the land perish not through the famine 37 and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants 38 and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of god take note i want to connect certain dangerous things this night and then we'll pray in whom the spirit of god is 39 and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has showed ye this 
there is none who is so discreet and wise as thou 40 thou shall be what immediately thou shall be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than thou 41 and Pharaoh said unto Joseph see I have set thee over all the land of Egypt 42 we are reading to 44 and Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck 43 and he made him to be to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt the last verse and Pharaoh said unto Joseph I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt thank you Jesus hallelujah we began to talk about the concept of value hallelujah that your value is measured by your ability to solve problems is that true and to provide solutions the bible says the gift of a man the value of a man it didn't say it can find room he said it makes room that means before then there's there's no space the value the gift of a man can make room and bring that man before great people hallelujah i'm teaching tonight on the reward system of the kingdom how to be wealthy the reward system of the kingdom how lasting wealth is made managed and multiplied hallelujah everybody write this word down problem and write this word down to solution Aaron, good to see you. You're welcome all the way from Abuja. Bless you. Problems. This is a word that many people hate, but tonight I want to make you fall in love with it because it holds the key to your financial destiny. Say amen. Problems people hate that word problems every time you hear of a challenge or a problem we run away from it and we do not want to be associated with problems hallelujah but let me tell you a few things that will bless you you're ready to write i'll dictate them number one until there is a problem you are unnecessary until there is a problem you are unnecessary I want to tell you some facts about problems until there is a problem you are unnecessary look up if you are not hungry you do not need a chef or a cook is that true if you don't have a patch in your tire you don't need a vulcanizer is that true if you don't need your hair to be done you don't need a stylist or a salonist is that true if you're not sick you don't need Benny him is that true if you're not lacking wisdom you don't need Mike Murdoch are you getting my point if you don't need deliverance you don't need Dr. Dick or Lukoya are you getting my point so everyone the moment you mention the names of people the problems that they solve is what you can remember about them when you talk of tiger woods you talk of something a problem that he was able to solve in the sports area or an impact that he was able to make solving problems and providing solutions this is the irrefutable key this one big key that holds the financial destiny of so many people I'm not talking about the kind of wealth that just comes as guesswork you don't know how it came you don't know how it sustained you are even afraid of the wealth because you think if you lose it you will never have it again 
remember we said financial dominion or financial prosperity is not just having abundance but the ability to replenish and sustain it hallelujah until there is a problem you are unnecessary number two the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems that's how the reward system of the kingdom functions hallelujah now look at me whether you sell the solution or you give it free the reward system of the kingdom says every time you solve a problem a reward must come to you whether you sell it or give it free it doesn't make any difference are you getting my point now this is the justification for a pastor being rich if he does not sell the teaching none of you paid money to enter here is that true what is the reward of the person then if he's giving free what is the reward of a philanthropist there is a law the reward system of the kingdom whether you give out the solution free or you sell it the moment there is a dispensing of a solution from you there is a trigger notice what he said in first samuel the king had given a decree whoever takes care of goliath immediately the king starts acting are you getting my point and he will give him great riches and his daughter and set his family free hallelujah so the reward system of the kingdom is not just built around prayers trust me i pray but i'm telling you the reward system of the kingdom is not going to come by praying and fasting 100 days alone the reward system of the kingdom is not built entirely on favor are you getting me now lots of people like favor i love it too but let me tell you sustainable wealth is not built on favor through wisdom is a house built by understanding it is established and through knowledge the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing hallelujah many people in the body of christ i said it the week before miracle service while we're dealing with patri that many pastors do not even know why they are rich they think they are rich because they are serving god yeah that's true but it's not so they are they are wealthy because they are offering spiritual value are you getting what i'm saying now there is a transformation happening to you right now as i'm speaking to you i'm opening you to understand the structure of the kingdom are you getting my point now you are receiving impartations i am dispensing to you so my reward is tied to my solving problems if pastors knew this they will know their prosperity is not tied to their members and they will stop yoking members with all kinds of things gimmicks here and there if i teach you the word of god in truth and sincerely as a minister of the gospel i'm teaching in sincerity and truth and i am not blessed then god has lied the reward system of the kingdom are you getting me now do you know why i'm teaching you this because not everybody is called into the fivefold and the way pastors have taught the prosperity message you will need to be a pastor to prosper by that message what if you don't have a crowd are you getting my point but when you understand that the reward system of the kingdom is built around solving problems we are going to connect it with the personality of the holy spirit in you and you will see why every believer should not be poor hallelujah number three a problem is an invitation for a reward the problem a problem is not an obstacle that comes to kill you every time you see problems around you around the society it is God inviting you for a reward a problem is an invitation they saw a champion that cannot be conquered David saw a Philistine he was interested in knowing the what and what would happen hallelujah challenges and problems are an invitation 
to be rewarded this is how the kingdom is built pharaoh had a problem it was an opportunity for the lifting of joseph is that true daniel came as a solution the king had a dream no one could interpret it no one could even he could not even remember it but daniel came he solved the problem are you seeing that in scripture don't just think those guys were just selected by god to be rich just like that they solve problems whoever kills goliath the king gives great riches and sets his family free are you learning something tonight a problem is an invitation for a reward number four i just want you to write these facts down the problem you solve decides your significance in this life the problem you solve decides your significance your significance is not tied to your background it's not even tied to your ability to speak in tongues your significance in life is tied to the problem that you solve that means that you are not insignificant because of your background and so on and so forth Jesus was born in a manger a few people came but when he was exiting the earth there was a crowd watching him had nothing to do with Nazareth hallelujah your significance is proportional to the problem that you solve your relevance and your significance is tied to the problem you solve that means every time you find yourself suffering from inferiority from complex prayer is not the only problem there is something you can do that can bring you out of that realm and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon there is something you can have that will make the king send for you and they will bring you out of certain realms is god speaking to someone tonight I just want to bring these points the way they are and I pray that you recognize and appreciate what I'm sharing there are some of us that in our families we are not the firstborn but aside from our parents we are the ultimate determinants of what happened in that family you know why because your significance in that family is not just tied to the age and the hierarchy it's tied to the problems and the solutions that you are providing hallelujah praise the lord let's continue the problem nearest to you is your exit out of your current season the problem nearest to you every time you say lord where is the door out of this problem out of this situation start looking at the problem near you that's the finger of god saying get out this is your door I was teaching the students in the school of ministry and I drew a door. Those who are students here, what do we call the door? Problems. That's the name given to the door that brings great men out. What I'm sharing with you may sound very simple, but trust me, this is why there are lots of broke failures in the world today. The problem nearest to you is your exit from your current season notice you are where you are today your limitation is the limitation of the solution you provided last and if you do something higher you will rise out this is powerful this is profound watch this to the glory of God and with all humility this ministry is at the level that it is according to the progressions of the solutions are you getting my point now I was I was at Pastor Pete Rock's place last week it was a wonderful moment by the way please celebrate him him and his wife they treated me so well it was it was a wonderful time I went to preach for him at his um, appreciation appreciation um, service and 
it was wonderful when i went there and i saw the expansion within a period of two years the expansion the increase the excellence i said this is it it's a law it's a law it works are you getting my point now when people come with results you know why there are so many of you sitting here and inside and outside some of you came as critics some of you came to confirm what you had some of you came because something happened to somebody around you and you could not deny it it was too notable are you getting my point now some of you vowed the first time you heard of koinonia you warned yourself warned your friends warned everybody here you are you know why because it's a dark world full of needs this keeps us in the market forever are you getting my point now our advantage is the darkness of the world this is what keeps us in ministry that's why the bible says when you see darkness arise and if you shine very well even gentiles will come to that light and a time will come kings kings will see people coming this is how a church grows this is how god showed me gentiles first come a time will come it will be so notable kings will start coming see it that's what the bible said gentiles a day will come kings will come are you getting my point now and it will be a privilege for them like sheba they will come with their gifts to honor the excellency of the wisdom and the hand of god upon your life i want you to know that prosperity is not a myth it's not a legend it's not a miracle it's not a mystery it's a formula gentiles gentiles do not come to see you they don't care about you it is your light they are coming for and kings to the brightness of your rising hallelujah i just shared with you a powerful revelation i have some deep revelations that the holy spirit put and he told me one time i had a vision pastor and i saw lots of white men it wasn't this meeting i don't even know if he was in this city a lot of white men people coming and i saw all kinds of gifts and rewards and i was flattered i was wondering i said goodness and god said you just continue what you are doing and see where it will end you do you know this is how great men started nobody gives you any guarantee to start ministry you don't find a thousand members signing for and say just start it's not political party that says i will vote for you there is something that gives you an audacity so when there are three people you can be preaching you know that the world is too dark for you to be ignored so you can criticize a man your problem will push you you may hate me but there is this treasure god did it in such a way you can't take it without me we must go together if it's in a plane we'll go together I have a very big God who he is always by my side, a mighty God. Who, by my side, by my side. There's one part, Satan come out for oh yeah. There are two ways to bind the devil. One is by prayer, another is by revelation. There is an understanding you can have that makes the presence of satan become a mirage in your life it doesn't exist anymore believe me somebody's spirit is fired up when you ask god for a new season a new dimension or greater significance he will reward you by empowering you to provide greater solution are you getting that every time you say lord i am tired of where i am take me he won't just come and just lift you vaguely he will empower you to solve more problems so when we start praying and say lord bring increase for us in koinonia and bless us god will give us an ability to raise only three dead people do you think there will be increase three dead people alone confirmed when that happens you will come here 12 o'clock and sit in the overflow let me tell you something get what i'm saying it's a very powerful principle it has nothing to do with ministry it applies in every area of your life 
Remember the story I shared with us. Can you remember the story in Enugu? Is it Enugu? One of the places. Pastor, there was something like a bomb blast and muddy water started coming out of the ground and it was healing the sick. When, when Jake sent the video to me and I watched it, I started, I, I first felt sad, but later on I started rejoicing. It is our turn to shine. Hey! It is our turn to shine. No devil will stop it. It is our turn to shine. It looks like this is arrogance. It's not arrogance. It's confidence that comes from something that is not even of myself. Remember, I shared with you two scriptures I'm about to connect. Because he said upon Daniel was the spirit of the gods. If you have, if you catch the revelation of what I'm sharing, you can sit down with a cup of gary and be dancing like a madman because you know that it's a matter of time. You are getting out of you will snap yourself, you will make sure you, you document it because the book you will write from it alone will bless you. Money is not a miracle. Nor is it a mystery, but a reward for solving problems. Money, I insist, is not a miracle. If you get miracle money, your bank account is a sign and a wonder. It's just a language God is speaking. Become a master problem solver. A master problem solver. And you sign out of a life of poverty forever become a master problem solver just write what i'm telling you you are either a problem solver or you are a problem yourself you are either solving problems or you are creating them you are either solving problems or you are the problem yourself hallelujah when God wants to promote you he gives you a greater problem to solve write this and style it you will need it in your life when God wants to promote you he will give you a greater problem to solve so when it was time to announce David Goliath showed up other people were seen an obstacle David was seeing a door. He said, I didn't know it would be this fast for me to be blessed. I didn't know it would take 24 hours for me to be announced. What reward? And they told him, your family will be free. You will have a wife without toasting her. You will have great wealth all for free. He said, come on, give it to me. Where is that mountain? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying? The size of your Goliath determines God's confidence about you. The size of your Goliath is an expression of how much God has confidence in you. Some of you are already thanking God for what you are going through. The size of your Goliath is how much God is beating his chest about you. Jesus. Hallelujah. The size of your Goliath. Failures in life are those who run away from problems. Never run away from problem. It's like repeating a class. Hallelujah. Never run away from problems. It is your exit out of your current season. I told you the size of your Goliath determines how much God has a confidence. God has confidence. And then the size of your throne is determined by what kind of Goliath you kill. The Bible says above thrones, there are different kinds of thrones. 
sharing with you very simple and powerful things problem solving providing solution hallelujah this guy is playing this keyboard he's solving a problem he's providing solutions it's easy to look at Don Muen and see what he's doing and say he's ministering but wait till you get into trouble and then you will see how much his songs can comfort you you will be forced to buy it that's why they never go out of the market because they didn't sing their opinion they just sang the word of God which abides forever you see that so a song that was sung in 1980 they know it will still be relevant I can I can I can sing a song that is dependent on my understanding at that time and it will expire when I grow but when you sing the word of God directly that was the secret of people it's still a secret of people like Panam Pasipo Lord we are sorry people who keep saying we are sorry forever because of the stubbornness of the inhabitants in the earth so that's a song that will sell forever you will need it at one point of your life see that welfare department has zobo and donut immediately after the grace some of you are going to carry your 50 naira or 100 naira and give them you don't even know the face of the person you are giving because you are not interested there are some of you you don't know i want to ask you a question what is the name of kenneth copeland's church who knows the name of his church very few how can you not know the church of a popular man i want to show you something powerful what is the name of Benny Hinn's church? Who knows? What was the name of Smith Wigglesworth's wife? You don't care. All you know is the problem they solved. That's what remained with you. Are you getting my point now? Are you getting my point? It's amazing. Some of you don't even know the full meaning of ENI, and, and frankly, you don't care. All you know is that you came for miracle service. Something happened to you and you gathered your whole family members and brought them. And you said, some of you just said that meeting in CGC. You don't even know the name and you don't care. And you beat your chest and say, I'm a proud member. And truly you are. Some of you may not even know my name and frankly you don't care. All you care about is the solution. Trust me if you stop getting blessed here for one month it's not that you hate me it's that you are desperate about your problem being solved you will corner you just find somewhere diplomatically the disciples were with john the baptist when jesus showed up he did something one two three they said john it's not like we don't love you but we are designed to look for solution are you getting this that means you do not look for money it is attracted you never try to look for money it's a quest that will end you in futility something brings it when the king sends for you hallelujah this is one of the greatest secrets also of a blessed ministry when you are anointed and the people are blessed the ministry will enjoy financial supplies from those impacted is that true say in the name of jesus i have an ability to solve problems say in the name of jesus there is something i have that can bring financial rewards when they employ you listen every time you see vacancy that company is telling you we have a problem can you solve it are you getting me now that's all they are saying vacancy there is a problem we have and you now apply in other words you are telling them i have the ability to solve that problem and they say let's test Praise God. All right. When 
they are interviewing you they separate those who are going to create problems from those who will solve the problems and they tell those creating the problems will get back to you there is a way you can become a money magnet and it's not by being a money monger listen it's not by putting pictures of money all around your room like a fool go and remove it if you have that kind of thing i know some of you have read the law of attraction and it's taught you godless things that one will take you to hell you don't put money all around your room some of you you have it in your laptop you when you are lying down you just put it around and you just listen to all kinds of useless songs that's not the way it works it doesn't work by covetous that is lost that is a craving that will kill you solve problems solve problems stop praying lord give me money say lord give me an ability to solve problems that's the prayer give me an ability to solve problems give me an ability i told you the problem close to you is your nearest exit the nearest exit a thief makes money without solving problems it's not solving any problem but it's making money that's why it's wrong a corrupt and wicked politician are you getting my point now makes money by siphoning from the resources if you are not solving a problem and you get rich sustainably you are doing something wrong you see the reason why those who send you all kinds of emails i was teaching the students in school of ministry when we we're talking about finance this is to announce to you you won two two million five hundred dollars huh some of you have gotten emails like that some of you are even hiding orders now you are still processing it don't waste your time those things are scams from the pit of hell it doesn't work like that that's how someone can stop you at the park and tell you come there's one money let's go to xyz all kinds of gimmicks happen in nigeria because people do not know how blessings come hallelujah it looks too simple for others to be blessed but for you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom that this thing there are spiritual laws that bring you into this truth that bring you into this thing and when you solve problems you open a gate for a dimension of blessings you may not be able to explain i see this happen all the time by the grace of god we are counseling people every monday and it keeps increasing it keeps increasing we almost get embarrassed on mondays because people have to sit at different places you think people will just travel from other states and just go to sit outside people sit under although we are working on it but people can decide to sit under a tree and sit for hours from morning to evening to see a man for five minutes you think people have that much time to waste everybody say becoming a solution there is something that can happen in your life that will make you prosperous this is the ability that uncommon ability to solve problems now turn with me to deuteronomy 8 18 and you will understand what the bible has been saying deuteronomy 8 18 Thank you holy spirit help somebody in the name of jesus everyone please read is projected just write and let's save time one to read but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that gives you does it make sense to you now what does he give you what is the power to get well are you getting my point so what does god give you wealth he gives you an ability and the bible says that ability can help you get wealth Aya. he gives you the power to get wealth what is the power to get wealth it's not favor the power to get wealth is not favor there is the esther anointing there are other dimensions but that's not the power to get wealth the power to get wealth is what came upon jacob that made are you getting my point the ability 
that made him solve a problem for Laban. Laban kept him. He said, I testify that God has blessed me for your sake. What kind of technology happened at the riverside that made animals to start multiplying because they were looking at water? Are you getting my point now? Elisha had such an ability to solve problems. Naaman carried gifts. They carried everything. See, that's why prophets, men of God in ancient times, they knew their worth. He sat inside the room. He said, who is this man? King, send him and let him know there is a prophet in Israel. Is it that there is no man that can solve a problem? And the king had to come and wait outside. Kings to the brightness of your rising. And he said, servant, tell him to go and bath seven times. That's all. That's the solution. Man said, you mean that's the solution? He said, you can sit down there and waste your time or go and bath. And he went seven times. And when he saw, listen, I want to show you a powerful principle. When he saw that he was clean, he was too grateful to remain there. He came back with gifts. This is what will always happen. It is the reward system of the kingdom. Are you getting my point now? The reward system of the kingdom. When they were looking for money, Jesus taught them a parable. They needed to pay their tax. And he looked at Peter. He said, Peter, are you not a fisherman? Go to the river. Solve a problem. Get a fish. Open the mouth of that fish. You will see money inside. Are you getting my point? That means the money is tied to your gift, to your ability. Open the mouth of that fish. There is money inside. Are you listening to me could it be that where you are right now is because you have not identified a solution you can provide to your world this is the reason why you are suffering complex this is the reason why when you stand before men you feel inferior because the world has not seen what you can give yet they've had your noise they've had all kinds of things no sick body has been healed from your hand you have not given anybody any wisdom any proof that the wisdom of god works in your life every time you solve problems you attract money you attract god you attract people every time you solve problems because every problem you solve has millions of people looking for the same solution they will look for you that's why we can criticize how badly people are still lining up queuing up in front of shrines let me tell you if god gives you an ability to heal only hiv you will have the largest church in the world only hiv guaranteed with proof every time only hiv if wheelchairs come you tell them you can worship with us but don't expect anything just hiv people will let it work just let it work people were so desperate that the bible says when jesus entered the city it was noised it didn't tell us those who noised it it was noised abroad that a problem solver had come he entered the house of peter his mother had a fever and he just rebuked the fever and she got up jesus became so famous so blessed because he was solving a problem he solved the greatest problem of mankind this is why he sits on a throne and has a name that is above every other name see god did not just give him the name because he was jesus i hope you know that position had been vacant through the ages that was the contention in psalm 24 the earth is the lord it didn't say it's for jesus is the lord's whoever takes that title will sit on that throne and the bible says when he conquered death he rose up a coronation was held on his behalf the lord said to my lord sit down on that throne until all your enemies become your footstool and now he has been given that name the name is not jesus the name is lord it's an office the ultimate conqueror because he solved the problem what is the problem oh death where is thy sting he conquered death he conquered hell and he conquered the grave what are you conquering if you have not conquered anything don't blame god for you for any poverty around your life what are you conquering whose problem are you solving god is asking you a question 
you will never excel in anything you are not gifted talented anointed or trained for gifted talented anointed or trained these things must happen you either be gifted talented anointed or trained say i'm a problem solver say it i'm a problem solver in the name of the lord jesus i'm a problem solver never run away from a problem a problem is an invitation to a financial reward system the purpose of conversation is to reveal a problem and solve it this is why people talk hallelujah i sit for hours and all i'm doing is talking with people and praying and they don't just tell me their names they don't sit down and say joshua selma what is your hobby or what color of shirts do you like the moment they sit down they tell me there is trouble sir and we hope you can help us hallelujah the world is full of pain and they are willing to pay anybody who can solve it no matter how small the world is so desperate that even if you are fake you can be blessed from it they are so desperate people don't verify they are desperate even when they perceive value they pay for it there are prayer homes you drop 30,000 no stories it doesn't matter what your problem is from headache to death you drop 30,000 straight from the outer court even before you see the man of God and there are hundreds of people that troop in day and night they don't mind hallelujah can I tell you something people will pay anything anything any price there are people that left Abuja this morning. There are people that come in every week from Kaduna. Every week from Kano. There are people who have come all great distances. Because they believe there is a solution. Are you getting my point now? That means you remain relevant to the degree to which you continue solving problems. And you grow in it. You grow in it you grow in it there is a kind of problem we will solve that will attract kings kings to the brightness gentiles come to your light but it's the brightness that attract kings they have seen light but when they see it rising it becomes too notable the wise men saw a light and they started following it they went to the house of the one who had that light they saw a star and they started following the star if the star took them to Egypt, they will go. If the star took them to Bethlehem, they will go. If the star anywhere, they were not concerned about the distance. They said, we want to know who made a star to rise like this. And the Bible says, they that be wise, Daniel 12 verse 3. It says, they shall be like the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness like the stars, even forevermore. I refuse to be a failure. I found my way out of failure forever in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, you can be soaking Gary right now and know that it's a matter of time. There are six billion people. There is enough room for everyone. There's no room for competition at all. There are too many problems. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. every hospital that is built has people because there are sick people hallelujah whose problem are you solving right now whose problem are you solving right now if you solve the problem of a millionaire you have access to his millions this is what makes us powerful we can solve the problem of the rich the poor the blind higher let me not go faster than myself a businessman can only solve the problem of poverty a doctor can only solve the problem of ill health but a spiritual man come on now a spiritual man now he has an anointing and has an ability that makes him relevant in all spheres if pastors knew this we would not relegate ourselves to look like idiots who are just relevant in church come on now there is an ability of the spirit 
that can make you stand anywhere and communicate the counsel of God with wisdom. They said, what wisdom is this? Jesus spoke to politicians. Jesus spoke to doctors of the law. Jesus spoke to laymen. He had the ability to multiply bread, fish, whatever it is. I have an ability. I have an ability. I can document my persuasion in a book and lay my hands on it and it will bring bread to my table. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's why a thief is a fool. He mocks God by stealing. With the problems in the whole world, when a man steals, he's a mockery to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Write this down. The power to get wealth is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer. Just write, I'm still speaking. The power to get wealth is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer to possess uncommon abilities to provide solutions. The power to get wealth, this is my definition, is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer to possess uncommon abilities to solve problems. Not to solve health problems. Not to solve demon problems. If it's a wisdom problem, there is an ability. If it's a leadership problem, there is an ability. If it's an entrepreneurial problem, there is an ability. Are you getting my point now? Let me tell you, if you know this, you will honor the Holy Spirit with your life. Play with the Holy Spirit, you play with your financial destiny, among other things. Your presence is heaven to me. Very powerful song. Your presence is heaven to me you see why i value the presence of the holy spirit so much take the holy spirit away from me i'm as useless as as a chair or a chair that is broken for me the holy spirit is not a pentecostal part of me the holy spirit is my life he's the only reason why i know i can be relevant to my generation the only reason He has put a treasure inside of you that can make the whole world look for you. Hallelujah. Everybody say in the name of Jesus, there is an ability of the Spirit that is at work in me that empowers me to solve problems, that empowers me to be creative to provide solutions for the problems of mankind and it brings me into a realm of consistent unending financial reward take everything i have today i will get it back it's a matter of time all i need is the presence of the holy spirit and the wisdom of the world he will give you an ability this is what makes you a money magnet there are some of you that came with seats after the service you are coming to bless me with it's not pride and this is not the last time it will happen it will keep happening again and again because there is this treasure everybody say there is this treasure in earthen vessel this is why i give him glory you see why i worship him because if god does not add any other thing to me i don't he doesn't owe me anything he's given me everything it now makes sense to you why the Bible says he that did not spare his son but offered him freely will he not much more give you all things and he said I have given you the Holy Spirit what else it's because we think the Holy Spirit just makes us pray in tongues the Holy Spirit will be relevant in every area of your life hallelujah when they employ you and you solve such problem 
to an extent that they look at you and they forget about what you studied there are people who work in lagos but live in kaduna the company pays their flight ticket twice or three times every week they are not complaining and they are not tired because without them the company will die when you become that kind of person no i don't care what cause is in your village are you getting my point that that partnership with the holy spirit will bind the devil by himself A day will come this thing you see the crowd here will only be one department in ENI a day will come we will keep solving the problems bit by bit distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us those who pack sewage your sock away you laugh at them but they are solving problems everybody goes to toilet and he will keep going to toilet every day predictable business true or false is that true I was talking to the school of, school of ministry students the other time and I told them if I'm to establish a business at that point I will establish a public toilet I would not look for for pure water and all of the public toilet sooner or later everybody is going to need it I don't need to market it I just need to keep it there you will look for it when the problem becomes serious you will look for it it's a law you can make noise, you can cut work, you can smile. When problems get serious, people become desperate for solutions. Hallelujah. This is swan water. Are you getting my point? Did anybody create water? Some people just sat down and calculated and they knew that man about is it 70 percent or there about of our body am i right it's made up of water good business that means you need to replenish it otherwise you will die and they simply package water are you getting my point now and they are making money they've been doing this thing for years till today they've not run out of money because there are six billion people goats drink water cows drink water hallelujah are you getting my point now there must be something what is business business is simply packaging your ability to solve problems so that you can meet a targeted audience and you receive financial rewards that's what business is business is not about ceo first class business is the art the ability to package your value to package your ability to solve problems if you write a book you now see why Jesus excuse me why Jesus said I must be about my father's business you are the salt of the earth he gave you a clue to your prosperity he said you are the salt of the earth he said you are the light of the world I carry this consciousness every day pastor one day we will stand before kings we will snap before kings it will be an honor for them to snap with us we are not going to go begging men of God we will return back the dignity of priesthood not go around chasing politicians they will look for us distant shores and the islands will see your life I shared with you my story I think one time when we're having one financial series I went to one bank years ago to go and beg for a loan they embarrassed me they harassed me they insulted me they disgraced me sent me out and I laughed come on now I said one day it's me and the manager that will enter and I'll go straight to his office and while I'm drinking tea they will be talking business with me it will happen 
banks look for men of God to give them loan without collateral. They call the name of the capital human capital. Where your presence is greater than 1,000 acres of land. Your presence is heaven to me. There are some of you when they employ you, they are not going to use the normal timing to promote you again. You will be too relevant. There will be an ability of the spirit in you. Are you getting my point? You will put your salary by yourself. Believe what I'm saying. Are you seeing the reason why there are many struggling youths around? Stop struggling. Master the art. Take advantage. Be like Nehemiah. With one hand, hold the sword. With another hand, the ability to build. The world will look for you. Skilled people are scarce. Genuine people are scarce. Gifted people are scarce. Don't take for granted that because you are gifted, everybody is gifted. Gifted people are scarce. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Banks are running around looking for a liquid dangote. Running around looking for ten dollar and all of these wealthy people to give them loans. They are running, running from others, running to others. I will run to God so that every other thing will run to me. It must run to me. Everything gravitates around its origin. I will run to God and every other thing must run to me. Say I have an anointing. Let me tell you what you have very quickly. What do you have? Please write. There is always what you have. And when you can use what you have, it is enough. There is always what you have. Number one, you have integrity, right? Things that can add value. Integrity. Your integrity can solve a problem. You may not have Naira and Kobo, but you can build yourself and have integrity. Number two, wisdom. Number three, understanding. There is a difference. Understanding. The comprehension of how things work in the kingdom. This is called understanding. The dynamics of the operation of the kingdom is called understanding. And this is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 11 verse 3 it says and it shall make you of quick understanding that's what was given Solomon an understanding heart it was an understanding heart that made him wise number three number four you have gifts and skill your giftings whether from your degree whether from your talent this guy can play keyboard hallelujah there are many of you that can sing tosin you can sing you can play keyboard when you sharpen it enough you'll be amazed hallelujah there are many of you who can speak on common oratory the ability to communicate with precision That's your exit out of trouble. That's your exit out of inferiority. Hallelujah. There are those that God has given leadership acumen. The ability to lead. There are people in this place, at least I know them, who have written books and their books are about going out of this country. Pastor, we will write books. He will put an unction upon us. We will write books that nations will read. It will solve the problems of nations. It will solve the problem of governments. Say I'm a world changer. Say it with conviction. I'm a world changer. There is an ability in me. I can never be poor because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in me. You must refuse it. 
your ability to solve problems and to add value to humanity day and night i say this with all humility this is just a bit of my private life people interrupt my private life with all kinds of gifts at this level where we are just starting you imagine what they would do to you jesus was just born just born they brought gifts just born just born they brought gold frankincense and man he was just born there is an ability that we have koinonia listen to me inside and outside god is speaking to somebody you are not a known entity you may not be able to speak english but there is something you have the world will excuse your inability to speak because of that thing you have are you getting what i'm saying Some of us here who are students, your lecturer may have insulted you. You are looking at your CGPA 1.5, 2.0, or you graduated with third class or pass, and you are saying, I'm finished. Don't mock God. Come on now. You have more than that. There's too much darkness. Don't mock God. There is a wolf prosperity. The world is too dark. They need you. They will die for what you have. Hallelujah. Die for what you have. Every time I wake up in the morning, I rejoice. Because I still wake up with his wisdom at work in me. I still wake up with his anointing at work in me. When I'm about to counsel people, shortly before they start entering, I say, thank you, Lord. The wisdom is there. I didn't refrigerate it. I don't need to cook it this morning to work. I don't need to prime it. It's there. It's resident inside of me. And I tell the people, begin to come one by one. And I am amazed to see the hand of Elohim tonight we are going to pray Esther had something to offer many people look at Esther's weak beauty but they do not know that she had courage courage if I perish I perish that was courage and with that courage she solved the problem there is someone God is speaking to do you know that if you start that restaurant you will solve a problem you have been complaining that there are many people there are plenty who told you there are plenty you know how many hungry people are in this earth everybody if I eat your food a sign that is sweet is you should see me there again if I buy chair from you don't you don't need to see me there after two years and God has been speaking to you start up that restaurant and you are there complaining and grumbling this is an elderly woman i'm speaking to and god is speaking to you hallelujah there are many of you that your hands are gifted your hands are blessed there is an anointing upon your life there is something you can do stop calling yourself adolescent stop calling yourself young adult it doesn't exist an adult is one who is not a child as simple as that once you are not a child you are an adult whether you believe it or not hallelujah everybody here has an ability to solve problems you have wisdom you have integrity you have grace if you don't have anything you have an anointing of the spirit you can educate you can teach there are schools that are resident in many of us right now schools that will be built there are homes there are institutes there are leadership institutes there are real estate moguls that are sitting down here some of you are just sitting down the bare land you are seeing in nigeria that you call a village is your inheritance that's where god will keep you and you will shake creation with your wisdom there are inventors there are all kinds of people sitting down listening to me and god is speaking to you and then there are men of god those who have been anointed to push back the darkness as if satan does not exist and we will keep doing it whether we do it free do it free don't ask people to pay for anointing you still mock god they can pay for your products they can pay for 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 your book or tapes and cds it is based on this revelation we can give all our messages free you know why because god will still reward us it is the reward system our concentration now is to bless you let me tell you the truth when you are blessed some of you 
some of you tomorrow you are the ones who will come and sponsor you will set up a whole studio for ENI you will do it single-handedly as a show of gratitude thou shall remember the Lord thy God for he has given you the power to get wealth what did he give you the power that means it's within you right now if you are born again the power to get wealth is within you let me tell you the name of the power to get wealth the ability to solve problems say it the ability to solve problems sweetheart you make bed sheets stand up please this lady makes beautiful bed sheets she made one beautiful bed sheet for me do you know how many people will be willing to buy that bed sheet matilda and sandra they started i think and ella also they started making zobol three days ago yesterday they received 200 percent increase on their business because they started they focused on adding cucumber flavor to their zobo i took it school of ministry student did you take it respond you are looking as if you didn't take it hallelujah when welfare started making zobo here they started making money stop praying give me money stop being angry with your uncle be angry with yourself provoke yourself to to get out of that season hallelujah there are so many people who can address listen listen this is very important there are so many people right now who have the ability to solve the problems in their homes hallelujah extra moral center do you know that there are people who can have an extra moral center huh? an extra moral place that teaches twenty-five thousand in abuja people are paying over twenty-five thousand just for lesson are you so dull did you get a in english why are you still sitting down you know how many people are struggling to get c in english imagine that you have an extra moral center packaged with excellence and you are teaching people just maths and english that's your own don't go and teach french or or crs no i know you're a christian just teach maths and english and tell the people don't laugh i'm very serious i want to challenge you because you are going to pray shortly tell the people guaranteed maths and english for your wayek 25,000. if you have 10 students you don't need a mic 10 students how much is that 250,000. that's what somebody in the oil company receives that we call a big boy am i challenging you there are some of us you have big laptops in your in your rooms and your homes you're just watching it you have one desktop can you not set up a business center set up something in your room you don't need ac forget about that false life people are not they, they don't want to know if you have suit or you can speak english can you print can you type that's all they care about there are some of you that are makeup consultants it's just that you are average you are average the only face you make up is your own you can rise to excellence people pay thousands of naira and dollars so that they can make them up i'm showing you that the power to get wealth is resident within you you will have to stand up he said awake thou that sleepest and christ shall give thee light there are some of you that cook you can bake but you don't want to improve yourself your wealth is there there is power to get well are you listening to me there are some of you god has blessed you with some small money hundred thousand five hundred thousand two or three of you can come together buy a golf buy a golf work with either the protocol department or anybody get responsible drivers put it on the road pastor the person that drives me with just within last year within last year he changed his car twice he just takes me on charter around twice there are many of our parents that cannot afford 5,000 naira 
to eat well at home but they have over nine cars scattered outside one the tire is on top of the car the other one the the the, the, the suspension has scattered can't you fix it and patch it and put it on the road anything that is in your life that you are not using and you are not putting to use is a waste hallelujah there are some of you you can even start even if it is akara and pap you see the problem with nigerians is this fake life that we have listen to me if you don't repent from it you will die a broke failure i'm not insulting you i'm just challenging you someone can buy a shoe of forty thousand huh buy a suit of of hundred thousand do you know how much the people who make akara you know how much they make in a day some of you after this coin on here right now you are marching straight there you alone you will buy over 300 naira akara yam you eat part of it today wrap the remaining eat it in the morning they make money every day some of you can go into retailing go into retailing retail pure water i'm challenging you i'm not the kind of preacher that will just tell you take take receive no no rise up and be productive solve problems and be rich hallelujah are you listening to me there are some of you sitting down here you have two or three clippers in your house how many heads do you have how many times do you bab in a week flamboyancy does not bring in results in your life if you carry one of those clippers and you go and put it give somebody go and rent a shop around hallelujah popcorn machine there are about 40,000 students in ABU Samaru campus alone how many popcorn machines do we have? I don't think there are up to 20 in that whole campus. How many saloons, ladies? How many lady heads do we have? At least 10 or 20,000. How many saloons do we have? I'm showing you how believers do not rise up to take responsibility. Car wash. Car wash. A car wash joint some of you can have a car wash joint i didn't say go and wash cars set it up and get people you think it won't work they gave you scholarship of two hundred and fifty thousand. you went around because a lady said she likes you you went and did unwise things with the money now she has left you the money too has left you these are all the the careless things we do around the truth is for some of us god has been faithful to us some money has come in here and there but we are just careless we don't think we spend we eat it and eat our destiny if you eat what you should eat tomorrow today you will die of hunger tomorrow hallelujah poultry poultry pastor my mother started poultry with about 20 birds I think day old or week old birds 20 but today my mother's poultry is enough to feed the family who is God speaking to tonight that the power to get wealth is resident within you the power to get wealth is resident some of you are graphic designers you are excellent you are just sitting down hoping that one day you will announce yourself where is the one day the media department is looking for excellent graphic designers are you getting my point they are paying people some of you make shirts my friend Ejimi, it was in this zaria a point came he was taking contracts of about 1.2 million every year guaranteed to make shirts shirts that you make creativity some of you plot you are just not serious you plot as occasion serves you when someone wants to plot and you are saying i'm watching film because you have not seen that it can employ you and bless you hallelujah do you know that this work 
that the protocol is doing there are there are institutes that are logistic is that true pastor when you are organizing crusades weddings or programs you contract it aaron is here aaron works with a a, a newspaper company in abuja but aaron also has his company third lord projections they are into event management so don't be angry when you see him blessed he's not just praying in tongues he's solving problems together with victor they have managed they have managed a lot of weddings that happen in this area some of you have that ability the power to get wealth god gave it to you some of you are excellent editors you are so good some of you are brilliant you can set up a school you can set up one of our one of our people in the prayer band here josiah he spoke to me and we spoke with him right now as i speak to you he has set up a tutorial center where he's serving it's called zenith educational center i i guided him helped him and prayed on it he has set up a tutorial center zenith tutorial center look at the beautiful name he brought one kind of name for me i said what is all this is a tutorial center give it a beautiful name Kofi Annan said something when he was Secretary General of UN and he said this. He said, let, he said this during Children's Day. He said, let the children not suffer the consequences of their parents' carelessness. Before you start criticizing parents, you are already making the same mistake. So listen. Because there are many of us, who are, at, at the rate we are going now, we are going to commit more of that mistake than our parents. Hallelujah. Grant us light, O oh God. Are you ready to break limitations that you have put on yourself and on your finance? Are you ready to break free from all those limitations? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very, very important. Number three, recognizing the need for financial freedom creates a sense of dissatisfaction. It pressures you to effect changes in your life by making new and quality decisions there are some of us in all sincerity listen to me that sometimes god allows certain situations to push us to a point where we see the need to begin to make changes there are many people it was when you lost your job that you came to yourself and you said wonderful i've been joking over my finances it creates dissatisfaction dissatisfaction hallelujah for instance for i know that there are many students right now as you're sitting down your school fees is totally you are depending on god right now hallelujah your welfare you see let me tell you something it is very bad of a pastor or a leader or a spiritual leader of whatever sort to stand and keep telling people don't sin don't fornicate are you getting my point now don't bribe don't cheat don't just tell them to stop show them the way that god has designed is that true you can't keep telling people give 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 package and offering give prophets offering give this and that that is very good but are you ready to show the people the way i am convinced that a blessed church will produce a blessed a blessed assembly of people now is that true and one of my passions in life is not to have a ministry with a few wealthy people then a bunch of struggling people and then those few are treated like the holy spirit in the church hallelujah it is god's desire that every one of you under the sound of my voice be blessed yes it is god's desire the bible said it it said that he delights in the prosperity of his servant thank you jesus so you must recognize the need if you want change in your life number two you must go for knowledge you must go for knowledge it's not enough there are many of us that recognize these needs 
but we don't know what to do what step do i take knowledge knowledge it's not enough to recognize the need goodness i'm telling you i know that there will be a revolution this teaching as it is coming it is going to cause a revolution recognize the need number two go for knowledge don't allow knowledge come to you pursue it many of us want knowledge to come free of charge great men pursue knowledge you don't wait for it to come to you many people like a wolf we want to sit down and let god bring it great men in life those who have become blessed in this kingdom are men who took the pain to pursue knowledge at any cost Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people are destroyed my people although they are my people it didn't say our people my people that you are God's people does not mean you cannot be affected it says my people are destroyed why for lack of knowledge go for knowledge and in going for knowledge there are two dimensions number one you need what i call a paradigm shift this is undergoing for knowledge a paradigm shift a change of mentality not just information now a change of mentality because there are certain mentalities we have it's not our fault but it's punishing us right now and we must change that mentality a paradigm shift a change of mindset a change of ideology a change of perception and a change of belief when you see the need the next step is to pursue knowledge pursue it like your life depends on it and can i tell you something brothers and sisters the earlier you start the better knowledge will cost you it will cost you time it will cost you your resources it will cost you your ego are you willing to let it down to get knowledge there are many arrogant people that know nothing about finance and they will not humble themselves and learn that you read economics does not mean you understand the kingdom's financial system hallelujah knowledge will cost you your resources there are many of us who are greedy even to ourselves the highest book you have bought in your life was 600 naira and somebody added some money knowledge is costly the bible says buy the truth say it after me say buy the truth he uses a business terminology when he's talking about truth and light and revelation we want everything for free many of us want to be pampered just write out a course on financial prosperity and come and sit down and baby feed me when i'm ready to learn you will give me you will be broke and you will suffer in this life hallelujah never entertain that kind of mentality you must tell yourself whatever my parents could not do is not their fault i will arise as that savior and wipe their tears hallelujah the educational system in nigeria unfortunately does not have a package that is designed to give the youth in this country financial intelligence it does not sustain that package in its curriculum so graduates finish school from 100 level all they are looking at is a job is that true i was sharing with the final year students we'll talk about that when we are talking about the natural law so i don't want to go ahead of myself hallelujah job 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 I shared it with them let me just touch a bit of it i told us that nigeria was an agrarian country predominantly is that true from the 40s down to the 60s and then we discovered oil and then it coincided with what we call the industrial age 
they set up industries and factories and so different people engineers industrialists chemists and so on and so forth got a lot of job companies will come scrounging looking for good students but from the late 90s till today there has been a transition in the world as a global entity and in africa and even in nigeria we have almost left the industrial age to an age that we call the information age what that means to you is that the job of 100 people can be done by one computer what does that tell you 100 people will lose their job that means there must be a paradigm shift everybody say a paradigm shift if you get what i'm sharing with you i was telling the final year students if you remember yesterday i mean the the, the graduation student i told them i said don't worry you will buy the jeep for me don't tell me thank you now it's in the future you will buy the jeep when you see your son playing around you call him and say boy come and sit down here if you play like this you will beg <laughs> hallelujah so knowledge a paradigm shift then number two is understand the economic system of the kingdom still talking about going for knowledge when you have a change in your mentality then you will now understand the economic system listen the kingdom of god is a system it has an administrative structure and it has an economic system every kingdom and every nation has what we call ministry of finance is that true that is responsible for coordinating all its financial activities the kingdom of god is no different there is a way the financial system of the kingdom runs and if you do not know it it may be at your detriment but the lord will open us up to it in the name of jesus then number three after after knowing and understanding the economic system of the kingdom what it is and how it functions number three is that you must apply what you know you must take action and consistently apply what you know for instance there are some of us here that a few things that you'll be hearing are not necessarily new but you have never taken action knowledge is useless when it is not applied consistently hallelujah so while you are seated listening to me make sure that there is a determination in your heart that you are going to put this thing to work the principles that i'll be sharing with you by the grace of god are proven principles people have tested it and it has produced results blessed be the name of the lord there are five things that will help you to take action under taking action number one conviction you will never act on anything you are not convicted about so you must get this knowledge to a point where it persuades you enough to take action conviction number two it takes courage to take action because many people taking action requires breaking the status quo doing something nobody has done in your family doing something nobody has done you must take steps remember peter when they saw jesus christ peter said if it be thou bid me come and jesus said come it was now left for him to take a step and he took the step 1,000 intentions are not up to one action that is taken. 1,000 intentions. Hallelujah. I remember one of my uncles in the village. They gave him a name. His name is Plan. P-L-A-N. The man has been planning till today. Is a retired soldier plan everything when you are talking he said it's, it's on plan I, I i have the plan 10 years he has not done anything i still have the plan hallelujah <laughs> i was talking with my mother this afternoon and she said he's not feeling fine he said 
Praise the Lord. I'm sure he has a plan to be healed too. Hallelujah. It takes conviction. You will never act on anything you are not convinced about. Number two, it takes courage to take action. Number three, it takes discipline to take consistent action. Discipline. Consistent action. Regardless of the outcome, consistent action. It takes discipline. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes discipline to tell yourself, I must study a book per week. It takes discipline to tell yourself, I must listen to this message 10 times. It takes discipline. Listen, in the school of prosperity, convenience is the last thing you receive. Are you getting my point? In the school of prosperity, kick away convenience. When you are still on, when you arrive, you can be blessed. Nigerians like convenience. Hallelujah. The youth in Nigeria like convenience. Is there fan or AC in this place? Kai, I'm feeling hot. Whereas there's no fan in your own house, but you come and inconvenience people and make a lot of noise. See, a lot of people, you go to a restaurant and you're harassing everybody. I mean, uh, they, don't have, they don't have a restroom in this place. And we like convenience. Convenience is good. So pay the price. To create one the best way to predict your future is to create it hallelujah it takes consistency to take action consistency conviction courage discipline consistency and finally it takes commitment it takes commitment it takes commitment there are many of us who are afraid of commitment in different areas of our lives because you know that commitment will cost you something say after me in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i'm on my way to better days i'm on my way to lasting financial freedom i'm on my way to being a blessing to myself and everyone around me in Jesus name hallelujah thank you Jesus action you must take action without action whatever it is that you have on plan is a waste there must come a time when you will take action hallelujah now let's examine the concept of prosperity the concept of prosperity all our discussion is going to be from the perspective of the kingdom even when we are talking about the natural laws the concept of prosperity and your ladder will be greater your ladder will be greater your ladder will be greater than the rest. I prophesy to you. Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater than the rest. For all things are possible. All things are possible. Don't let the devil tell you it's not possible. 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 They are possible. For your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater. Your ladder will be greater than prosperity we're examining the concept of prosperity right now hallelujah so the paradigm shift begins now we're examining prosperity the word prosperity comes from the word prosper and it simply means to do well the word prosperity please write it down comes from the word prosper and it means 
to do well it means to do well your well-doing your well-being let me define prosperity to prosper means to possess a means an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind to prosper in the kingdom means to possess a means an ability or power to meet the needs of mankind regardless of what those needs are the means the ability the power to meet the needs of mankind regardless of what those needs are hallelujah to prosper also means to enjoy the fullness of the blessings of God's life as designed by God himself to enjoy the fullness of the blessings of God's life so way that so way life that quality of life the blessings that comes by being a partaker of that life the ability to enjoy it to the fullness hallelujah and now in the kingdom there are five areas that you must prosper to be called prosperous truly right there are five areas of true biblical prosperity are you seeing now that prosperity is not all about money financial prosperity is just one of the aspects of prosperity there are five areas number one spiritual prosperity spiritual prosperity i'll list them and then i'll define them this is a course this is a lecture this is not so much preaching tonight i'm teaching this is a lecture going on number two mental prosperity i'll list them and i'll explain them number three the prosperity of your health bodily prosperity the prosperity of your health your physical well-being number four financial prosperity number one spiritual prosperity the, the prosperity of your soul number two mental prosperity three bodily prosperity your health number four financial prosperity and number five relational prosperity spiritual prosperity mental prosperity what's the third one bodily prosperity number four financial prosperity and number five relational prosperity if any of these areas are wanting in your life you are not prosperous by god's definition that means if you are a multi-millionaire are you getting my point and you are failing relationally you are failing in your health you are failing in your mind you are still short of god's definition of prosperity are you getting my point from the earth's perspective they say you are a rich man you're a multi-millionaire you're a billionaire but from heaven's standpoint you are not prosperous are you learning something spiritual prosperity what does it mean to be spiritually prosperous what does it mean to be spiritually prosperous it means to be born again what shall it profit a man the bible says if he gains the whole world and loses his soul that means what shall it profit a man if all these other aspects of prosperity are in place but he loses his soul look at me there are people and some of you are here listening to me you can kill for money 
you can pray in tongues you can do all of this but once it gets to money i need to hold some treasurer please give me something five thousand or six thousand let me hold it so that some of you wake up this is what you want to see some of you your mind will say now you are talking it's now you are talking to me please hallelujah spiritual prosperity if you pursue money the kind of money that takes you to hell there are many politicians many people god bless you who will contact witch doctors and all kinds of people because of money this is not what we are talking about here are you getting me there are some of you they've even taken you to some places and they said they can wash your eyes to see well let me tell you right now if it is not the word of god washing your eyes your sight is still darkness hallelujah look at this email email the Lord is changing you. Don't just be laughing. Himela. Help me worship him. Himela. Look at me. This is what some of you can die for. Some of you can allow any man sleep with you and do anything because of this. There are people today that this is what will drag them to hell. Are you getting my point? People have gotten into armed robbery because of this. People have joined dangerous occultic society in this country because of this what is it about this it seems to love some people and hate others some people chase this all their life whereas others have it coming and are praying that it stops coming what makes this happen please listen to me if you let this naira and kobo take you to hell I tell you, you have made the most, the, the most foolish decision in life. Your spiritual prosperity comes before finance. Are you listening to me? Can I tell you something? It's easy to claim you love God when there is nothing much to lose. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a way a thief will come to your house. You say, thank you, carry it. All that is left is that bag. Just pick it up. The Bible says, Jesus told the rich man, do this and this and that. He said, I have kept the law even from my youth. He said, go and sell your possession. It was a test of his spiritual prosperity. He had material prosperity. He said, go and sell what you have. Give it to the poor and come and follow me. And the Bible says, the man was offended because he had much possession. Hallelujah. At what point in your life will you stop serving God because of money? One million? Ten million? I know people who love God, but one small job or one small business, you just made one small five million or small ten million and you won't hear anything again. There are people, they want to come and dictate to the pastor in church. Let's preach about about wickedness who are you to tell the pastor to because you have a personal problem with with your wife or whatever it is and because the pastor is broke and poor although anointed he will say all right say the lord just changed our sermon it's titled wickedness i vowed to god and i told him lord any money you will give me that will take me to hell let it not come and i i say it before god some of you this is the first deliverance this night you will not roll on the floor but something is leaving you hallelujah look at this 
some of you have lied to your parents because of this some of us are playing pranks in our workplaces you can cut corners christians born again let me tell you something if you're offended i'm sorry but i'm going to say it there are many corrupt and wicked christians in the body of christ they are born again they are filled with the holy ghost but you go and see what they do in their workplaces hallelujah you sign out for goods it's supposed to be seven million you now sit down with a few people and say let's negotiate we will give the pastor tight and we have certain pastors may god have mercy on ministers when the man talks to the pastor he says of course wisdom is profitable to direct are you a fool that you say seven million make it 23 or 24 so that at least they will give you 17 and then you now bring it to church see we men of god will not say it because we are benefiting from it if you buy me a jeep from that money let me tell you the truth can i be honest with you many people will go to hell because of this thing and tonight you must make up your mind to be to be to be prosperous spiritually first the other matters because the bible says there is no peace to the wicked say the lord whether it's a wicked millionaire there is no peace this one money cannot give it he said peace i give unto you my peace i live with you not as the world gives may the lord never give us money that will take us to hell may the lord never give us money that will make us partner with satan may the lord never open us up to opportunities that will jeopardize our christian life look at me wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust in the kingdom you don't achieve prosperity you are trusted with it in matthew 25 the bible says he gave them that talent after a while he came back to seek for accountability this is the difference between kingdom wealth and just wealth that you realize that i'm a steward by grace of this that god has given hallelujah oh i like that imela song can we sing it again imela help me worship him imela oh kaka after me in the name of Jesus I will not let money take the place of God in my life there are some sisters right now that are not even in their houses they are in one man's house you came for koinonia but you came from somebody's house what are you looking for money he can sleep with me no problem because of money you mock God every time you compromise to be rich you mock god you insult god and you say god is not able but our god is jehovah jireh he's more than enough are you listening to me some of us may need to end some dangerous devilish association there are some of us students right now you are already planning to swindle your parents it's in your plan you and the group of friends you're already planning to tell them oh i'm in final year i'm in this i need two hundred thousand, and then you cut corner whether you come and stand here and drop the tide god will not honor what comes from a heart of wickedness he said because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows see many people many people many nigerians hearing this message will be angry with me they'll say you are a fool oh boy now for you are you in nigeria see i'm a young man no oh. i'm a young man i'm not 100 years old are you hearing what i'm saying i'm a young man 
don't think I came from one planet I grew up in this very Nigeria you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity into the blessings of God there are many men today because of the do you know that the reason why some of our uncles cannot bless us is part of the covenant that they had in covens before they got well have you seen people like that they are so wealthy they can even give the poor but they will never help anybody in their family it's part of the agreement they have sold their soul to the devil for it i've said it again and again a man whose wife suffered with him they drank gary together they prayed together they went from house to house brought a man of god to conduct night vigil now god blesses the man and the man turns and looks at his wife and says you are not fine again money has opened his eyes the tree of the knowledge of good and evil has made him to see something he's not supposed to see hallelujah many wealthy people compromising on their wives compromising on their children they will sit down be crying and dying of hunger and the man is there servicing one one Jezebelic lady somewhere hallelujah can I tell you something whoever did not believe in you before you became blessed is not qualified to be part of your success cabinet brother if the sister cannot see what you are seeing the, when you get blessed and she comes pack your load and go don't come around and say ah i don't believe in him and then later you call him and say i'm walking in shell say, ah but you've not been calling me now now for you my brother go away run quick go and find somebody that believed in you are you getting blessed say spiritual prosperity your spiritual prosperity i did something one day years ago i put one one thousand naira plenty on the ground and i said lord i stepped on it i said lord as i'm standing on this money it will never stand above me this is my vow with you that it will never stand above me do not give me any level of resource i've told god do not bring us as a ministry to any level that will kill the fire of god in our lives suddenly the sick are not healed again the only thing we are we're, we're celebrating in koinonia is just prosperity people are not saved people are not blessed people are not healed people are not delivered they are not taught the word may god forbid it we respect prosperity but it must be holistic starting from our spiritual life many men of god don't take altar calls in churches again all that they are concerned about is money 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 everything is money even on crusade ground money everything is money can i tell you the truth money is not everything what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world satan tested jesus in this he took him up to a cliff and showed him the glory of the kingdom in a matter of time and said bow to me in other words compromise your spiritual prosperity and take your fine and take financial prosperity and he looked at him and he rejected that temptation many of us this is what has happened to so many people many of our parents have brought a lot of tragedy to our homes because they went to go and visit a herbalist and it backfired they won't tell anybody where they went to but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the son of the living God nothing and no one will take the place of God in our lives for some of you this is your message tonight this is a revelation that God is giving you because the way you are pursuing this money you may lose your salvation for it there are some of us who are hustling we are in anything anything that works once you see somebody with nice watch you just say how did you get it say there is something that's how you keep following how can you be so gullible that you don't care whether what it is is whether it's compromising your that's how many believers have gotten into drugs do you know how many believers deal do drug dealing 
including pastors many men of God in this country do drugs they do drugs many ladies go around they travel to Italy you go to Italy and go to UK and see how many Nigerian ladies are there trying to make money they send part of the money home and their loved ones build houses and they call pastors to come and dedicate it never allow anything compromise on your faith I'm speaking to you right now there are some of you sisters there is a brother right now that is coming around your life he loves God his spiritual prosperity is sound it's just that he's on his way to balance himself financially but because of your being gullible you see a man you know this guy is not born again but you are just chasing him because of finance and then when you come to us and we ask you is he born again he say hey, he's okay okay it's not spiritual salvation is he born again with clear fruits of the spirit working in his life if he, if you truly love him bring him for koinonia let him be changed you are not the holy spirit don't carry anybody because of his money because he just parked his jeep in front of you one accident can take that jeep away but his spiritual prosperity connects him to a source that can reproduce it again and again hallelujah brothers i bring you a word of encouragement let no man despise you you are sitting down your shoe may be caught in under but trust me if your spiritual prosperity is sound eventually all these other ones that we'll talk about will come into place stop that hustling any business you want to join anything you want i just want to hustle stop it there is a way that cement right onto a man and the end thereof are the ways of death god can guide your life to walk circumspectly into a realm of abundance he said and i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places hallelujah see there is nothing that irritates me as a man who tries to pursue money and does not value God. Go around our society, you see people with three phones, five phones, making all kinds of calls. Hello, hello, I'm, 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 the, I'm here, I'm going to this, I'm going to the airport. You go to the airport and see them, psycho fans, all kinds of people trying to make money. They want to hustle, I must make it. Can you print book? Yes. Can you fix shoe? Yes. Can you make hair? Yes. Everything you just want to hustle is not done that way. Your spiritual prosperity. There are men who stop coming to the house of God from the day they were blessed. You call them and they say, sorry, uh, I have to be in Germany now. After that, I will touch Brazil briefly and then I'll come through Ghana. May God give you the health to keep traveling. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? For as long as you have needs, it's not a big deal to pursue God. Is that true? For as long as you have needs. But let the needs be satisfied. There are some of us who will leave God. One day they look at you and they say, Ah, madam, I used to know you in Koinonia. I said, Come on, don't talk to me like that. God show this person whose wife i have become your spiritual prosperity your spiritual prosperity say in the name of jesus i am born again and born again for life not money not power not access not influence will take me away from the love of christ the apostle speaking he said what shall separate us what shall separate us from the love of christ there are some of us very little things have separated you this morning don't get me wrong money is very important that's why we are teaching it but it's not the way many of us are going about it hallelujah number two mental prosperity oh let me define spiritual prosperity i didn't define it it means to be born again filled with the holy spirit it means to understand the ways and the principles of the kingdom 
That's what it means to prosper spiritually. That you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost, and you are growing in your understanding of the operation of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. It also means you are conforming to the image and the character of Christ. That's what it means to prosper spiritually. To be born again, one, filled with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. It means to understand the laws of the kingdom, the operation of the kingdom, the ways of the kingdom. And then it also means to conform. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. The formation of Christ in us. That's what makes you humble. So you see a man who is a multi-millionaire, but he's so humble. He can still be an usher in church. Is that true? There are many of us as we are right now, with the little blessings that we have, you got a job with MTN or you got a job somewhere. There are some of us, the way you are, you cannot even walk in the house of God. You can't clean chairs, you can't do anything. You feel too big. My father is a senator. My mother is a minister. I'm the chairman of this and that and that. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. Have you read that scripture? I this was the king with all his prosperity he said i rather leave my palace and be a doorkeeper in the house of god hallelujah no matter who you are you drop your title and money when you come to the house of god when you come to the house of god you are a student in the school of the spirit and you learn with all humility and serve with all your heart we are going to go to that scripture. The Bible says, if they obey and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. Sing it one more time that your eyes are just upon him alone. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Number two, mental prosperity. We have to hurry up so that we can pray. Is someone learning something tonight? Is God challenging somebody? Mental prosperity. It means you are prosperous mentally when your will, your emotions, your intellect, or in short, your mind are well developed and deployed to improve the quality of your life. You are prosperous mentally when your mind is well developed and deployed to improve the quality of your life. Hallelujah. There are people who are not prosperous mentally, madmen, those who are going through all kinds of depression. They are not prosperous mentally. You don't want to be rich financially and then have all kinds of mental issues. Wrong mindsets. That's lack of mental prosperity. Notice my definition. That your mind, which consists of your will, your emotion and your intellect, are well developed and deployed. Imagine a man who is born from a rich family. How many of you have seen what we call imbeciles not an insult now have you seen those kind of people how many of you have seen them those who are born from rich families they are very wealthy but they can't think are you getting my point they are not smart they have loss of memory that's lack of mental prosperity you need to be alert you need to be sharp 
you need to be intelligent you need to be able to articulate yourself and articulate the things of the kingdom intelligence is very useful in kingdom advancement when you read acts chapter 18 the last five verses it talks about the encounter of of who apollos now right apollos when he met aquila and priscilla he the bible says he was a learned man his mind was developed the kingdom does not make people dull are you hearing what i'm saying and daniel was of an excellent spirit there are many of us we can't remember anything I know people that even at age 19, 20, they cannot spell their names. They need prayers. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your mind must be developed. It's not enough to just be blessed and they call you and they say, please, go and make a speech. Talk to a few people who are trusting God for blessings. And you just stand and just speak nonsense around but you are a millionaire you are not blessing anybody your mind must be alert so that you can transfer the knowledge you know to bless others if you are not mentally prosperous your prosperity cannot go far because you cannot help others to come to that place and the beauty of the kingdom is not only that you attain a state but you can guide others to come to that place it says in the genesis 12 verse 2 shall all the families of the earth be blessed hallelujah and how shall they be saved when there is no preacher how shall they experience that dimension of salvation until there is somebody who is mentally sound bill johnson wrote a book years ago the supernatural power of a transformed mind many people concentrate on their spirits and they forget about their minds they don't develop their minds they are so unintelligent they are not articulate this is why they cannot get jobs i i spoke i spoke with a few with the final year student yesterday and we'll talk about that in the natural laws your mind is a useful tool in your well-being in this life don't throw away your mind just because you are spiritual i said it that there are some graduates in nigeria that are not employable they are not employable you want to be a secretary you cannot even write a formal letter how are you you are writing you letter you question mark because we have not seen the value of developing our minds the renewal of your mind through books through tapes cleaning and learning let me tell you something i love it when i see competent people we're going to talk about competence i hate incompetence because no one has a right to be incompetent incompetence is a direct pro product of laziness and a lackadaisical attitude favor answers to the gift and the value of a man i was speaking to the final year students we'll still talk about it there are many lazy people around mentally lazy they don't read books they don't attend seminars they don't do nothing all they want is for money to just come have you seen people in abu here who who tell you that whether i write exams or not all i want is just that certificate my uncle who is a politician they are mentally lazy they are the type that don't build roads well they collect contract and build nonsense and the roads are swelling up as if they are they are, they are pumping fire under them these are the kinds of people who are mentally they are not prosperous mentally it's not enough to be sound spiritually believers are not idiots the kingdom does not produce dull people say i'm smart say it i'm intelligent the kingdom does not make foolish people we are articulate we can step into systems and legislate on behalf of the kingdom but it comes through mental preparation there are certain things i do every day before i sleep can i tell you something it's not everything that you see here that is just anointing as in dash are you getting what i'm saying paul said i am what i am by the grace of god he said but this grace was not showered on me in that i labored more than ye all and what is that labor he spoke about the labor in the word and prayer not just word alone revelation hallelujah we're going to have a workshop this saturday we're having a workshop for all the heads of department the little level of excellence that god has given us as a ministry is not dash it didn't come by magic it's not just by prayer 
everybody say mental development i'm challenging you right now because there are many of us that hate anything that has to do with developing our minds you bring a book to study say kai this book is 200 pages it's too much but do you like money yes you want to be blessed yes there are many people who are fighting for offices that god himself will not let them get there because they cannot legislate on behalf of the kingdom when they get there I was listening to Sanusi, the CBN governor. Now, I'm not a politician. I don't want to know what is happening. I mean, I, I, what I, I'm, it's not that I'm not concerned. I'm just saying I'm not involved in all of this. But I, I love those that are in charge of the financial sectors of Nigeria, among other reasons. They are smart. Are you getting my point? Sanusi is a genius. He's intelligent. He's not daft at all. Very smart. Very articulate. They understand the system. And then Ngozi oh she's smart do you know those who are her referees referees of her cv presidents of nations the way you have your uncle and your auntie referee you you think a president will come and jeopardize his integrity on somebody's cv they are very intelligent and smart people and that's why their intelligence frustrates a lot of gullible politicians who want something for nothing can I tell you something? Mental prosperity will bring you to a place where no gender barrier, no religious barrier will stop you. There are some things they cannot just do without you. The whole world stood still for Nelson Mandela. He was not just a, a human rights activist. That guy was a brilliant man. Hallelujah. God is speaking to someone. Have you been neglecting your mental prosperity? You want to go into business. What do you know about business? Nothing. Name five top business people, both in the kingdom and around, who are doing anything. I don't know. All I just know is that I will sow a seed. And my God, Jehovah Sharp Sharp, the one who can break protocol. Listen, listen, listen. That kind of teaching only makes men of God prosperous. It doesn't make members prosperous that's why everybody wants to be a pastor because based on that template that is given when you raise people who are mentally prosperous they will be blessed hallelujah are you getting what i'm saying be smart the bible says when they called daniel and all the other people he articulated a level of mental prowess that was 10 times better Ten times better and he reigned through the dispensation of three kings nobody removed him lay your hands on your head everybody and prophesy to yourself say in the name of Jesus I will develop my mind in the name of Jesus I contend for mental prosperity I study books and resources that empower my mind along the area of destiny hallelujah hallelujah i read books on leadership consistently i'm sharing some of these things with you not as a way of boasting i hope you understand i just want to encourage you hallelujah i've understudied the largest churches across all the continents of the world what do they understand whatever is not godly about them i kick it away but i'm studying what is their mindset like how are the leaders like the world leadership conference that happens every year i make sure that i studied i was listening to dangote's speech in lagos business school and i was wild i said this guy is not daft though. this guy is not daft it's not just cement that made him rich hallelujah who is developing your mind you will keep being angry and remain mediocre in life don't just depend on your degree go for knowledge create a university for yourself youtube is free google is free stop browsing those devilish things you know what i'm talking about and concentrate study the lives of leaders god has told you you are going to be a leader it will not just happen by prayer and fasting there are many people who are bad church pastors although they are born again because they know nothing about church leadership they know nothing about corporate financing 
on Saturday we are having a workshop with the leaders. We are not just going to be praying alone. It's a time of appraisal. It's a time of teaching. It's a time of training. I like you from today. Make up your mind that mentally there are some people that if God tells them today stop preaching, they are failures for life. Because there is nothing else. There is no other way they can add value to people. This is what makes people think that pastors are dollars. They are the ones who have failed in life. Everything has refused to work. Then they just say, let's go to the vineyard. The vineyard is not a place for stupid people. It takes intelligence to plot the land. Am I challenging you now? Because there are some of us who are carried away just that, okay, I'm on maybe your CGP, I'm on 3.5. I'm on five points and you think what you have it may not necessarily be mental prosperity you need to go for knowledge go for knowledge there are few seminars that train pastors most of ministers meetings are just manifest and there is a place for that everybody is falling and rolling from morning till night they carry an anointing with a dull head and they go to do ministry and things don't just work out hallelujah i'm challenging you to hate laziness you are too young to be lazy no matter how old you are sleeping for six for, for, for six, seven, eight, nine hours. Not at this level of life. You've got to challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head one more time and just pray in one minute. And say, Lord, from today, this spirit of laziness, this spirit of lack of mental development, Jordan Bookstore is here. We keep announcing it. Go and get books that will build you. Challenge yourself. Yes, you are spiritual. What do you know around the area you believe God has called you in? Mental prosperity. Change us, oh God. Give us a paradigm shift. Help us to appreciate the place of competence and excellence in our lives and our endeavors. Hallelujah. 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 No day of your life should pass without you developing your mind. And don't let no spiritual person come and tell you that what you are doing is not serious. Just focus on your spiritual life. There are people who all they are doing is fasting and praying. Fasting and praying will not replace the price of mental development. Are you getting my point? We use spirituality to excuse a lot of responsibilities. Buy the truth. It didn't say receive it as, as an impartation. Buy it. Let it cost you. Hallelujah. Number three. Let's hurry up. Is God changing somebody tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Mental prosperity. Invest in your mind. Honor your mind. It will honor you tomorrow. Honor your mind. Honor your mind. Invest in your mind. Invest in wisdom. Invest in wisdom. Invest in books. Get materials. Jordan, please stand up. Please quickly stand up. That's Jordan's bookstore there. We don't have a ministry bookstore. That's our official bookstore. He just came with some materials. And we keep telling, there are some of you, when you stroll, you don't say, how much? Once they say 500 naira, you leave it. You've been buying with one for years. Put something inside, not on top. Put something inside, not on top. Brothers, you better don't laugh because I've not finished talking. I've not finished talking. Put something inside, not on top. What does it profit us if we have a very beautiful lady who is mentally poor? You are not encouraging the man. The journey is getting harder because of your presence. Change, ladies. Don't sit back there waiting for one man to come and marry you. Begin to contend for mental prosperity. It's not all about Brazilian hair or Chinese hair. No, invest in your mind. Don't let no man drag you like a house girl because he came and met you a liability. Be an asset.
It's only the ladies that clap. Don't worry. The brothers are suspecting that I'm coming and surely I will come. Hallelujah. I've said it to our brothers again and again. And I will say it. Listen. Honestly, I'm saying this from the depths of my heart. My brother, you have no business looking at any lady if you have not sorted out part of the things you must sort out is your mental prosperity. You are going out with her to where? Where is the map? Where is it? There are many of us that just like women. We just like any, you just, that marriage thing is eating you up. Calm down and settle down your life. Just let our sisters come and receive and go back. Train yourself. There is a level that you too, you will not have tried. Where her, her father will even see you. Or her, you think I'll carry my daughter and give yeah, yeah. No. No. My brother, if I give you my daughter, you too, you will know I tried. No way. I'm not talking about coming with a jeep. I'm coming about coming with substance. You sit down, the father is asking, he said, young man, so what do you understand? What's your mindset about prosperity, fatherhood? And he said, well, when a man is 30 years, the man is saying, ah, no mental prosperity. No mental prosperity. Even if you speak spiritual languages, my daddy, I thank you. You have a similar name with my Joe. The man is asking a simple question. What do you understand about fatherhood? Hallelujah. Many of us are allowing spirituality to make us dull. God is speaking to you tonight. You better dust off that thing. Tell yourself, I will be competent. I won't go anywhere and any man relegates me to the background. Being a Christian is not just to start prayer and start opening prayer and end it. You have something to say. A man of God said, Don't just say something, have something to say. Don't just say something have something to say there are those that are saying something but there are men that have something to say job was one of those men although he was born again unbelievers and everybody testified he was an intelligent man the opening of his mouth was the the the, the unfailing of wisdom job in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle he said the young men saw me and they fled the elders saw me and they bowed their head what level of competence will make a man become a global voice? Because there are some of you, Nigeria is too small for you. But you need to push yourself higher. The way you are now, God cannot lift you. You can't represent him properly. Number three, bodily prosperity. Let's leave this mental thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Health. Everybody say health is wealth. Say it again. Health is wealth. To be prosperous bodily means to be free from sickness. To be free from disease. To be free from infirmity. To be free from yokes and oppressions. Of darkness. Let me take it again quickly. To be free from sickness. To be free from disease, to be free from infirmity, to be free from yokes and oppressions of darkness. When that state becomes a reality in your life, you are prosperous in your health. There are many rich men who are sick. They are sick. There are people who take drugs all the time. And this is not mockery. But I'm just contending. This is why we have times when we pray. And if you are part of those people as you are listening to me now. I want you to know that the anointing of the spirit is moving from this word. And that devil of oppression over your body lives right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You must believe it's God's desire for you to be healthy. Sam Adeyemi said something. He said many people punish their health to be rich. Then they use their money to maintain their health. They kill themselves health-wise so that they can be rich. Now when they become rich, what happens? They use their money to maintain their health. Hypertension, all kinds of things. 
the man is a billionaire but he's seen people he's seen things you sit down and you are quarreling later your wife taps you and says no you are okay nobody is, is taking the money because something is wrong with you even if you buy the wheelchair for one million you are still on a wheelchair hallelujah all kinds of people do you know that God wants you to experience prosperity in your health because if you are not prosperous in your health you cannot be agile Joshua said my strength is still as it were in the days of my youth some of us 25 30 40 you're already behaving as if you are 100 they say stand up now you just drag yourself come on now we used to sing one song shake 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 into the fire shake off laziness shake off all of those things i'm young and strong that's what you must tell yourself some of us hate it when they say you are young you say how can i be young do i look young continue that's a revelation you must get out of your mind what is wrong in being young being young doesn't mean being small or childish it means being alive strong carry this speaker when you carry it you hold your back as if you just gave back no no this is one of the secrets of our parents fathers and mothers you see a woman 70 years old there are many things that she can do even the children are lazy you wash three or four or five clothes and you sit down you say kai i had a busy day whereas that's what your mother was doing from the day you were born until you became 30 years that you are hallelujah say i'm strong in my body and there are certain things that can help you to maintain good health it's not everything that is demonic try and eat well you may not have all the means now but please eat well turn and tell your neighbor eat well there are some of us the wickedness you are doing to yourself the, re the revenge will come in the future some of us you've been taking gary from almost throughout this week and it's not like yes of course things are not there yet but come on now Abba, go to your friend's room let him help you what is all that don't starve yourself if you're fasting fine if you're not fasting eat well understand about balanced diet it doesn't take money it just takes wisdom with the 300 naira you used to buy for more all 300 naira for more break it down have a balanced diet start from somewhere start from somewhere some of us are rich but we are making foolish nutritional decisions very foolish biscuit in the morning this puff puff or whatever you are just eating every kind of thing be strong they ate garlic they ate cucumber do you know why they were strong that was part of the reason they ate onion they ate a lot of things don't let this this tv people fool you look at the person who is advertising he's not healthy look at what is advertising to you see that's why you see people in the village they are not born again but 95 they are still strong no classes take water regularly not just juice you go to sit down somewhere they give you 50 cl minerals only you now you take it a few minutes later see listen don't just laugh i'm very serious many of us have never paid attention i used to be like that anything just comes until the day the lord began to caution me and say mr man if you want to stay long be careful thank god we have a welfare department that does justice celebrate them where are you welfare wave your hands proudly hallelujah that's part of the reason why we can teach and shout because we know when we are done there is honorarium <laughs> hallelujah some of you need to help your parents with this decision they may not have the variety to cook well now you have you've had some level of orientation must you let them die like that prematurely? go and help them say in the name of jesus i make up my mind to stay strong and healthy do you know what the bible calls gluttony have you have you have you, have you heard of that word gluttony excessive eating 
is is not just about desire there are some of us anything you see it must finish before you rest there is pressure on you and poverty is part of that cause see let me tell you something i used to like a lot of things i thought i liked it now i know i, I don't like it they just bring bread in your house you are used to the 2020 naira on and they bring one nice one the type that has coconut in it you can't sleep you are restless you can't wait for the next day it's poverty <laughs> prosperity gives you calmness options that's why you can see a rich man he just comes it takes one small piece of chicken and it's okay and you are just sweating let this man leave that table let me come and show him how to eat come on now i forbid you from being poor in the name of jesus <laughs> growing up we used to hope that our father will finish eating not because i guess his me my mother just gave him that husband treat and the thing pain us as children we'll just be hoping there are some houses well god will help us let me not say anything eat meat take take a balanced diet try try do your best do your best do your best number four financial prosperity this is where we'll soon stop and pray financial prosperity what does it mean to be prosperous financially number one or this is just a general definition it means freedom from poverty lack and the effects that come with them freedom from poverty freedom from lack and freedom from the effects that these things come with there are things that follow poverty fear insecurity greed hatred anger you see that so financial prosperity is freedom from what poverty lack and the effects that come with them it also means having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish and sustain it having abundant financial supply alongside the means to replenish and sustain it that's what financial prosperity is having what abundant what did i say abundant financial supplies but it's not enough you can have abundance today and you will not be able to help somebody after 10 years but the ability to replenish it are you seeing that now replenish it and sustain it that's financial prosperity thank you jesus that's someone's portion in the name that is above all names in the in, at the end of this this teaching you will be free from poverty lack and the effects that come with them i hope you wrote that there are effects that come fear greed self-centeredness insecurity inferiority all these things are things that come alongside poverty there are houses that have shops and even if the child takes pure water the father must force the child to look for five naira and bring it's not just business sense that one has gone beyond the jordan that is poverty greed because you have very little you cannot release part of the reasons why politicians release a lot is because there is an atm around the corner so they can give you one million and go and fetch it back but there is a way you can bless people and as you bless your band keeps increasing yeah proverbs 3 from verse 9 and 10 says honor the lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase it says so shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats or thy one presses to overflow hallelujah thou anointest my head with oil 
my cup run it over finally relational prosperity what good is your money if there is nobody to celebrate with there are many of us who have destroyed relationship with our family members with our friends with everybody because of money we say to hell with everybody once i make money the money will become my friend there are many rich people who are lonely today because they've they they worked on everybody in their life and right now they are alone relational prosperity what does it mean having quality relationships please write having quality relationships that give opportunities to express love and care having quality relationships that gives opportunities to express love and care comma improve yourself comma learn share affect and impact lives just be writing and build a lasting legacy for generations that follow listen there is a dimension of your life that must be prepared to leave legacy after you if christ tarries not necessarily when you are gone in your lifetime you can build a legacy and bless others i'll repeat it again having quality relationships that give opportunities to express love and care comma you need to express love and care you need to improve yourself and relationships give you that platform you need to learn relational prosperity gives you the opportunity to learn you need to share you need to share you cannot share with yourself you need to affect and impact lives without relational prosperity there's no platform to affect and impact lives for instance i'm relating with you right now as i have the opportunity to teach you i'm talking with you you're responding back to me there's relational prosperity and to build a lasting legacy for generations that follow today we are able to learn some of these things because our fathers and those who have gone ahead of us among other accomplishments they were able to sustain relational prosperity so they wrote books that we can interact with hallelujah they held meetings that we attended that blessed us i'll end this teaching today by defining what financial dominion is today is just introduction financial dominion what is it thank you jesus financial dominion therefore is the ability to totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects they bring financial dominion is the ability to totally totally mark that word totally conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring what are the effects fear insecurity greed self-centeredness unrighteousness i'll take it again fear insecurity greed self-centeredness unrighteousness all of these are effects that means at the end of this series you should be equipped to make this definition a reality in your life say amen. amen that you will be equipped with the tools to help you conquer lack poverty financial hardship alongside the effects that they bring realize that financial dominion is a journey it's a journey you journey into it I can't take you there using this teaching but I can equip you with the tools and guide you to get there it will take a while but as surely as the day breaks after the night that financial dominion is a reality Bishop Oyedeko came to speak at Dunamis 
and he made a statement that broke me he said not everybody is struggling hallelujah because of the recession and everything that happens around he said not everybody is struggling there are people who by grace and wisdom have been able to ride above when the flood came as it was killing others it was lifting Noah's ark and he dropped it at Mount Ararat hallelujah we are going to pray and I want us to pray seriously just five minutes prayer but it's very serious rise up on your feet everybody I'd like you to begin to thank God for this series I told you it's a revolution it will do something in your life inside and outside begin to pray and bless the Lord say Lord I bless you for the opportunity to hear this free of charge you're not paying anything the word of the Lord is coming to challenge you we've said a lot today challenging you on what prosperity is challenging you on seeing the need to be financially free and that it is possible Shake -ba 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 -ba. lift your voice and give him praise say Lord thank you finally the way out for the tragedy of my family has come finally the answer to my prayer has come blessed be the name of the Lord Ambroso Many of us will give God thanks. Many of us will give God thanks. Years to come, your generation will thank you for paying attention and inclining your ears to these words. Hallelujah. 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 I like us to pray and say, Lord, I make up my mind that my journey starts this night. Lift your voice. I make up my mind. Some of you have not started any journey, but make up your mind that it starts today and it will not stop till you enter your financial destiny. Make up your mind. Lord, from today I take responsibility. I take responsibility over my financial destiny. I take responsibility for the sake of my destiny, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of my generation. Challenge yourself in prayer. I take responsibility. In the name of Jesus, I lay aside childishness. I take responsibility. Don't say I'm too young. Don't say I'm a lady. Don't say I'm a student. Don't say I'm unmarried. Don't say I'm too old. No. Failure to hearken to this word will punish you in the future. Make sure you take it seriously. Don't just be emotional about it. Let there be a determination in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer. You're going to say, Lord, help me. You will need the help of God in this series and in this journey. Some of us, what you have had today has rattled you. Some of you are angry. Some of you are offended. Trust me. This is part of what this, this course will do to you and it will build you. Hallelujah. It will take meekness. You're going to say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and pray. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me, oh God. I seek the help of the mighty God. As we progress in this journey, help me. Help me understand. Help me apply the things that I'm taught. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next week, we'll take the other aspects and then we'll also give you recommended books. 
I'm sorry I didn't write some of them. I don't just want to mention books anyhow. It's not every book you need to read. There are few books that when you get, you will get most of the things. There are many financial books, but there are few books that have the quality of what you need. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Now, while you're standing, there are a few people here right now. We spoke about spiritual prosperity. And as we began to speak, the Lord was telling you that this is it. It's not enough to just be rich. Inside and outside, everybody listen. It's not enough to just be prosperous. Remember, we started by talking about our spiritual prosperity. And there are some of us here, you have struggled. And tonight, the Lord wants to give you rest. The Lord wants to give you rest. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Today is the day you will make that decision and say, Jesus, I'm not only giving you my financial life, I want you to take everything. The worship team led us in a powerful song, take all of me. There are some of you, you have given your life to Christ, but you have not given your all. And tonight, you are saying, Lord, no more backsliding, no more one leg in, one leg out. May I invite you right now, inside and outside, wherever you are, you want to start a fresh relationship with Jesus Christ, or you have given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. Welcome. The Lord is inviting you right now. Please come, wherever you are, inside and outside, wherever you are. Don't sit back. Hallelujah. Inside and outside. Don't wait for anybody to come. There are people the Lord is talking to inside and outside god bless you as you're coming god bless you they are coming appreciate them there are many people outside you need to be born again even if you have a christian name you need to give your heart to jesus god bless you god bless you keep coming keep coming we'll give you one more minute just stand and face me god bless you some of you as you're standing the lord is speaking to you don't let your friends stop you this is the beginning of an experience. Motivate them, Koinonia. Appreciate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome home. God bless you. Let this be the beginning of an authentic experience. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Thank you so much for coming. The Bible says for as many who will come. Keep coming. Hallelujah. The Bible says he will in no wise cast away. I want you to know that although this is a financial seminar this is a financial teaching this is a series on finance but that this is the beginning of your life hallelujah that at any level of your life you can make up your mind and start with jesus christ and i welcome you lift your right hand and say this as loud as you can say after me lord jesus i love you i truly believe in you i ask you to forgive my sins and cleanse me from unrighteousness tonight i've heard your word and i made jesus lord of my life from today i denounce sin satan and the works of the flesh holy spirit come and live in me strengthen me make me a believer in the name of jesus christ as you prosper me financially let me also prosper spiritually in the name of jesus christ keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought these ones by your grace and i pray that this will not just be an emotional recitation but this will be a genuine experience that will culminate into the quality of your life in every aspect empower them give them spiritual prosperity give them financial prosperity in the name of the lord jesus christ i declare that the hand of god is strong upon you you'll never be the same in the name of jesus christ amen now i'd like you to follow the ushers just follow the gentleman waving his hands there's a group of people who will welcome you and they'll give you some details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah praise the lord now while we prepare to take the announcement if this is your first time of coming for our meeting, this is your first time of attending Koinonia, we love you, we celebrate you. I'd like you to jump up on your seat and come out quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, this is your first time inside and outside. You're welcome. Please come. Please come. God bless you.
God bless you. Appreciate them, Koinonia. God bless you. No matter how far you are welcome, we have a prayer and a blessing for you. Just come out and stand here. We celebrate you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much for coming. Please keep coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. A meeting put together by Eternity Network International. We are here every Friday. We really celebrate you for coming. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for coming. We truly, truly appreciate you. And I assure you that your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for you right now. And ask that the hand of God will come upon your life. Stretch your hands towards them saints and prophesy. When we bless you here, you are blessed. When we speak over your life, it will come to pass. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless them. We bless you with the blessings of this house. We bless you with hunger for spiritual things. We bless you with wisdom. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with favor. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. For watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.